So you have velocity banking and then you have another marketing term called paycheck parking and another term called accelerated banking. These are sexy terms to describe a fairly complicated, confusing type of a strategy. Allows us to leverage debt to pay off debt or leverage debt to invest and make more income. That creates more cash flow. So if we remove the terms at its core level, this idea of velocity banking, if we remove that term, remove paycheck, remove accelerated banking at the core, what you are doing is replacing your checking account with a credit card, a HELOC, or a PLOC, or a BLOC for business owners, right? One of these four tools is what you're essentially using to replace the function of your checking account. What does a checking account do for us? Well, it's where money comes in, right? So income that you and I generate has to land somewhere. For all of us, it lands in a checking account. And then that money will sit in this checking account and it pays bills and it pays debts. And then what's left over after bills and debts are paid is cash flow. So cash flow is left over after all bills and debts are paid. Where does that cash flow go? Well, for some people, it'll get moved out of the savings account and it'll uh, out of the checking account and it'll go into a savings account or they might transfer it to a brokerage account or a money market or a CD or wherever, right? That's that net cash. Either all bills and debts are paid or what a lot of people do is they take that cash flow and they eventually make an extra payment on their debt. So what happens is that cash flow doesn't reveal itself for most people till the end of the month. So that cash flow was sitting in the checking account doing nothing, earning nothing. And then it was deployed after all the bills and debts were paid. Then the individual that's trying to pay off their debt faster is doing so by making an extra payment. So this model of make money, spend money, have cash flow, extra cash flow, pays off debt is the traditional model of eliminating debt. Now, what I just explained there has marketing terms. Those marketing terms are called debt snowball, debt avalanche, extra payments, right? These are marketing gimmicks that attract eyeballs, that get people to say, well, what is debt snowball? That sounds, debt avalanche, extra pay, what? What does that mean? It's exactly what I just explained. Very simple though, right? Much simpler, bringing it back, to velocity banking by removing the terms, the first thing that's happening is you're replacing your checking account, you're replacing that function of where money lands. So instead of your income landing in your checking account, you immediately would move the money from your paycheck into one of those four products, a line of credit. Then from there, that line of credit, you then extract money back out, depending on the tool, money would come out, pay bills, pay debts. And then what happens is you would have a debt such as a car and in the form of chunks, typically, or lump sums, you would move the car debt from one location into the line of credit. There is a marketing term for that. That is called debt consolidation, where you move debt from one location to another. So, so far, what I'm doing is I'm building and incorporating everything that I just said into one strategy, which I typically we'll name it Velocity Banking. Velocity Banking leverages these marketing strategies, leverages debt consolidation, and leverages the traditional function of a checking account and moves all of that into a line of credit while still simultaneously keeping all these different things. So what happens is your line of credit replaces the checking account. You still have the checking account. You're not going to close the checking account because you still need a location to send your money to for your employer. Checks go into a account and routing number. Boom. Automatic. First move. Money comes out of the line of credit to say make a chunk another marketing term or lump sum payment to pay off or pay down a debt. Let's just use the example of pay off. So you literally would pay off the car with the available credit limit of this line of credit. So the car is paid off. You now owe nothing. The payment, you now don't owe a payment to the car, but the debt got moved to the line of credit. So now you owe that same amount of money in the line of credit. But now instead of traditionally waiting till the end of the month to make the extra payment, towards the debt, once you paid all your bills and you have your net cash flow left over, you're actually immediately faster paying the debt off of the car and then your income 
is now all of the income is now paying down the line of credit. So now money came out, paid off the car, income came in, got moved to the line, then money comes out of the line again to pay the remaining bills of that month. And it creates this cycle. This refers to the velocity of money. Let's look up the definition velocity of money. If you've never heard that before, the velocity of money, we're going to learn the definition together. Go to my, share my screen here. Velocity of money definition. Velocity of money is a measurement of the rate at which consumers and businesses exchange money in an economy. What in the heck does that mean? Let's read a little bit more. It is the number of times that money moves from one entity to another. The velocity of money also refers to how much a unit of currency is used in a given period of time. Simply put, it's the rate at which consumers and businesses in an economy collectively spend money. The velocity of money is usually measured as a ratio of gross domestic product, GDP, to a country's M1 or M2 money supply. The word velocity is used here to reference the speed at which money changes hands. So understanding the velocity of money is important to understanding velocity.